This beautifully tailored double-breasted tailcoat dates from between 1837 and 1840. Derived from riding dress, but now worn more generally for smart day wear, with trousers and a waistcoat beneath. It is made from rich, dark claret-coloured milled face cloth. Face cloth is a super fine type of plain weave wool. The coat has a high rolled collar with V-notches at the point where the lapels and collar meet. These notches are relatively simple compared with some examples. At this time, and also earlier in the 19th century, men's tail coats had featured M-shaped notches and other even more elaborate types, showcasing the exactness of the tailor's art. This hunting coat from the V&A dates to around 1800 to 1820 and has fashionable M notches. This coat from the Olive Matthews collection dates from the slightly later period of 1845 to 1855. M notches are also present but are slightly wider. They were at the end of their fashionable period for day wear at this date and were soon to be relegated to evening dress. The collar of our coat is stiffened with an interlining of canvas which has been moulded and secured underneath by means of graduated padding stitches which link the layers together. The even and deftly worked stitches require a strong and experienced hand. Such a high and fashionably shaped collar must have lent the wearer a definite air of confidence in keeping with fashion plate images of the time. Some earlier examples are seen here. The lower front edge of the coat is cut straight at waist level and just meets the top of the trousers. The rounded pleated tails are stitched to the main body at the back waist seam. Cutting the tails separately was a relatively new innovation, which began around the 1820s. Previously coat tails were cut in one with the body as seen here. The tops of the tails also include deep pockets with pocket flaps. A suitable feature for practical outdoor wear, though possibly laying the wearer open to be targeted by pickpockets if he didn't button the little inner flap. The tails are not hemmed. Instead they are simply cut and the edges of the cloth left raw. This may seem an odd aspect of such a fi finely tailored coat, but it was normal practice at this time and is seen on other coats of the same period. The tightly woven wool would not fray and the issue of a bulky and easily damaged hem was removed. The coat is fastened in the double-breasted style with eight gilded brass buttons. These have been decorated with a four-pointed star and oak leaves. The positions of the buttons as they widen up the torso enhance the effect of a broad and manly chest. The sleeves are set in flat at the shoulders. They are long and tapered and the corners of the slit cuffs are chamfered off, echoing the notches at the collar. Each cuff is fastened with three small gilded brass buttons, one of which is now missing, featuring a star design with lattice detail. A further observation which indicates that this coat was made to the highest tailoring standards is that all the edges, other than the tails, are bound with narrow silk braid. Inside, the main body of the coat is partially lined with black silk satin. The sleeves are lined with cotton for durability, with the addition of brown silk velvet where it might be seen at the cuffs. This is for added comfort where the fabric rubs the skin at the wrists. Yet another detail which attests to the high quality of this garment. Further investigation of the inside of the coat reveals that there are padded sections within the lining at the chest and back, a technique used from the early 1800s to make coats hang well and to give a pigeon-chested look. Puffed sleeves, imitating women's fashions, had been a feature of tailcoats during the late 1820s and early 1830s, as seen here in this exaggerated caricature. Both of these elements had become more subtle by the end of the 1830s when this coat was made. English tailoring has a well-deserved reputation for quality of both cut and cloth. The later 18th century had seen tailors perfect their cutting skills to the point where the French, normally leaders of fashion, had adopted styles associated with the tailored English riding coat, a trend that was christened Anglomania. The fashion for beautifully cut cloth was inspired by the sartorial choices of English aristocrats who spent much of their time on their country estates. By the 1790s their outerwear, practical riding coats made from woolen cloth and muted colours, had become mainstream fashion for all but the most formal occasions. Innovations in the practice of cutting and fitting during the first half of the 19th century led to further refinements in men's tailoring. Tape measures were developed and used for the first time during the early 1800s, leading to a more scientific approach based on geometry and human anatomy. 
This prompted the publication of a number of complex guides and handbooks for the quality tailor. However, perhaps the greatest development of the era lay in the art of construction and fitting. The subtle use of interlinings, padding and shaping meant that coats followed and sometimes enhanced the line of the body with a new and far more flattering way. These techniques were used in conjunction with the tailor's iron, which shaped and stretched the pliable woolen cloth to the required silhouette. <laughs>